Hi everyone, um, and welcome for the second uh, progress report of the IDM project. Um, so, adding on to the agenda, so I already started recording, uh, and I will ask uh, for uh, anyone in this uh, list of entities to be the note taker. And I think the uh, Jill already already um, put put his name. Are you going to take the notes, Jill? Uh, yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm very appreciated. Um, so, um, heading on, please, if you haven't put your your name in that list of attendees, please do. I think we are missing some some people. Um, and also, if you would like to add items to the agenda, um, such as your weekly updates, and perhaps if you have any demos to show, to show, please list them as well um, so while while people still are writing um, perhaps we we should start with a round of intros and updates so um, going by order actually i'm the first one so i'm andre cruz i'm working on the on the idm project more on the backend side and i will share my screen to be easier for everyone to read the, the notes okay can you see my screen um, yep. Okay, cool. So uh, my round of intros and updates. So by the way, let me put this bar here. So um, in terms of what I concluded, um, so I, I helped and finished renaming the IDM Y to Nomius. So Nomius will be uh, the name for the actual application, a web application that we are building. And we decided to not use the IDM uh, Y uh, name because we want other people to implement uh, other applications based on the, the IBM spec. So Nomius will be the reference one, but people can, can actually implement um, their own applications based on the same spec. Um, so this, this took a while because there was a lot of, a lot of um, documentation and papers and uh, designs as well to, to be um, using the old, the old name. It requires us to update all, all of those uh, you know, files. Um, also, I've helped making all the design assets public. So we were using um, the first approach. We were using GitHub, but uh, GitHub is not really um, made to to store and share uh, binary data. Um, so we ended up using uh, an open Google uh, Drive uh, folder. Uh, if you go to that link, you have the link of the Google. Uh, folder so you, you can explore our assets and design material and, and all of that. Um, and also I helped uh, Paulo uh, be Marcus or Paulo uh, in defining the GS IPID module in terms of the interfaces, the methods and, and the arguments and return values. Um, I think it, it's quite nice at the moment and perhaps is, uh, Paulo will talk a bit, a bit of that later. Um, in terms of what I'm doing right now, I'm implementing two modules. The first one uh, is called Human Crypto Keys. And basically, it's a model to generate and import deterministic uh, uh, and human friendly cryptographic keys using mnemonics and seeds. Um, so, there are some work uh, based on uh, the or within the UPort and Blockstack projects. But those projects actually use elliptic curves, which is, uh, you know, uh, is, is quite straightforward to create uh, them based on seeds, but not uh, that much for uh, RSA keys, because RSA keys needs to need to be um, need to run an algorithm in order to find primes and all of that, and it's not straightforward. Um, so I decided to implement a model that not only supports RSA keys but also will support elliptic curves such as. Um, AD25591 and the Bitcoin one, which is the, the SECB256K1. Um, and regarding the, and by the way, I have a demo for this, for this uh, library. Uh, it's still a uh, work in progress, but I had some um, thing to show um, in terms of it working with, with the RSA. Um, and regarding the other model, um, it's basically, a byproduct of the first one because the first one also actually export keys themselves in various 
or ideally in various for formats. We started with PEM, the PEM format. Um, so there was a bit of you know uh, research around this, and actually the lib P2P uh, crypto uh, repo or library only supports RSA encrypted uh, keys, and um, the human crypto keys you know, it doesn't make any sense to export encrypted keys with a password because they are already, you know, the mnemonic is, is your passphrase basically. Uh, so we needed a way to generate uh, PEM keys without a password and lip 2 p crypto nor NodeForge supports exporting them uh, via PKCS, PK, PKCS8. Um, so I decided to implement a module that will, you know, leverage NodeForge and, and also some other libraries to, to actually be able to parse keys. Um, um, at the moment, I'm, I'm aiming to support just three types, RSA and uh, the two elliptic ones that I've already uh, mentioned before. And, um, and basically also it, it will be able to export or generate uh, an actual key, an actual PEM file, based on what you parsed. That's basically it. Um, in terms of what I'm building next, um, so all of these two, all of these work, like these two libraries will be used inside the, the deed scope of the IDM wallet. We really need to, to implement those two libraries in order to complete the, the deed uh, IDM wallet scope. So um, as soon as I finish them, I will be able to implement the deed um, scope. Um, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask ask them if you want. All right. So there's no questions. Um, uh, yeah, I just I I didn't, I, I didn't quite get. So what was missing from the libp 2 p crypto library that you needed to re-implement? You needed to implement. All right. So basically, um, there's there are two issues. I can actually um, open them, but the first one is that. Uh, Basically, P2P crypto doesn't ex doesn't uh, allow you to import keys unencrypted. Basically, you can't import a PEM file without a password. That's the first issue. Okay. Um, the second issue is that it doesn't yet support um, importing um, elliptic elliptic curve uh, keys. So if you go to keys here, and you have the import method. Um, if you see, uh, it, it actually tries to decrypt an RSA directly. So in order to support elliptic curves, we need to detect uh, the PEM file in order to, to understand what key, what key is there. And then uh, we can either uh, decrypt it as an, as an, uh, as an RSA or um, elliptic curve or other type of keys. Um, so to give you some context, context I don't need elliptic keys. I just need uh, an encrypted um, PEM files, but at the moment it doesn't support neither of those. So I decided to, to <coughs> implement a library that will hopefully I will suggest leap to leap it to be crypto to use it in order to, to change this code over here. I've actually created an issue. If you want to go there, there there are some there is some context there for you to read. Okay. If you have any, any any more questions or any more if you need any more context. All right, thanks. Um, any more questions? No. All right. So adding on to the next uh, person in the list is Souza. So hi guys. So as Andre was saying, I've I've concluded already the part where we have moved all the design files for the public folder. Uh, also, the I already predicted the animation for the structure of the model layout. This is divided on three use cases, which is half, half uh, ordered and white. They adjust uh, according to any use case. Um, already concluded the loading CDA and uh, all scenarios on the style guide. Uh, it's already implemented. And uh, I made a quick, quick prototype and uh, draft for the profile slash identity page. Uh, just looking for the look and feel uh, wise, uh, just for now. Uh, currently, I'm working on uh, three variants for the model flow. Uh, do not uh, Confuse, uh, confuse, confuse this with the with the model layouts. It's totally different. It's a flow where there are multiple layouts. And right now we have the logic is divided by three, which is the symbol. I'm just trying to read here what I have accomplished so now uh, for now. 
which is the simplest uh, variant that is always uh, all, all stay out and never changes. Even though that could have more than one step, the uh, content will fade out and fade in with slate Y. So that keeps the most basic animations predicted from the other pages uh, or interactions of the app. Uh, I have uh, as well the sim simple with feedback. <clears throat> this variant always starts with half layout and finishes with a full layout. This will be mostly used for basic flows where it's needed a final, final confirmation or feedback. The content should be animated as the same way as preferred on the other example. Uh, the other one, which is uh, wide, um, starts with a half layout with vertical margins and it's followed by a wider layout, which has uh, at least uh, two steps before the final feedback. Feedback is treated as the one above as well, uh, using the full layout and its animations. This is used m mostly for complex flows, uh, since it will expect more content and progress given my multiple steps. Um, okay, uh, let me see what I have next. Uh, the concept and, um, and uh, a new version for the Nomios <coughs> symbol and brand, it's already predicted, but it's not finished, so it's still in progress. And uh, the same, same with the uh, app shell. For now, uh, blocked, I had just this use case, which is the purchase of the font. But yeah, hopefully we'll have that solved as soon as possible. Um, and next steps for me will be the brainstorm team here regarding the identity profile page, uh, the animation for closing the models, which I referred to previously and then include the final decision regarding the icon, the logo, and its variants on the style guide. And for now, that's it. Right. Um, Andre, if you, if you want to share the logo, the logos that you're building uh, in, the, in the end of this uh, meeting, you, you have like- I, I would prefer to share with the team uh, since we have a final, final result, because, mm -hmm. okay, we have a decision, but it's the, visually it's not final, so. I'll try to adjust a few details and then maybe I can share. Perhaps then in, in the next in the next meeting. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, all right. better. Okay. Uh, any questions for Sosa? Nope. All right, so heading on to the next one, uh, Pedro. Hey, hi guys. Um, so what I've concluded this, this sprint was a feedback message component. Um, the component suffered some some adjustments. Um, we have now a, a tooltip uh, on 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 the icon because this feedback message you have uh, an icon on the right or on the left, and you you now you can over the icon and you 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 will see and you will get a, a, a tooltip. Um, so I also did the repo setup. The, the gnome of repo setup where the app will, will be will be uh, will live um, you you have the link here to check it out if you want um, I also refactored some some components regarding the code review for for the PR that was open uh, for the initial components um, what I am doing right now is implementing the model flow uh, in the UI kit um, I will not explain it because Andres Souza already did it. Um, but as you know, we we had a model layout component, and now we have the model flow, and the layout will be within the model flow. Um, but you already know the the, the variations that this this component can have. Um, and the next steps will be implementing the the lock screen user journey, and. That's that's it for me. Any question? No. Okay. I'm sorry, I was muted. So um, no questions for Pedro. Next person in the line. Uh, is sorry, Andre. Andre, before continue, I just have a detail to to, to reveal with the team. We're okay. we're really focused on the model layout and the model flow because. Uh, most of the user user flows will be based on that component. That's why it's costing a, a bit for for all of us, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, basically the model will will be used inside the create create identity flow, import identity flow, edit profile exactly. flow, and many others. Uh, I will say in the future. In the future, the idea is grand consistency uh, across uh, all the new flows that could appear. But for now, the logic behind the division that we, we made uh, with a simple advanced and uh, simple with feedback should, should work for, for all of them. Yeah. 
Thank you. So anything on is Jill. Next one. Sorry, I was just finishing uh, writing some notes. Uh, uh, well, the the things that you I want think to, to do. The, do you want to skip this one and it will be like the last in the line, if you want? No, 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 no. I can. All right, can all go. right. Go ahead. Then. Uh, the the things I finished in this in this uh, sprint was uh, changing the instances of IBM to Nomius in the Web UI kit, uh, just like uh, Andrea said before. Uh, also, I helped refactor the Web UI kit uh, according to the, the implementation standards that we, we discussed. Uh, some changes like uh, where to place the prop types, uh, if we use stateless and stateful components, etc. Uh, and I um, implemented the loading feedback on the button components. Other than that, uh, that yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, in the next sprint, I will be implementing the lock screen user journey. So that's about it. If anyone has any questions. Right. Any questions for Jill? No. All right. So next one is Paulo. Hey guys, so basically during this sprint, my main focus was uh, developing the JS IPIB module. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know what this is, is IPIB is basically the implementation of the DID specification over IPFS. Uh, and uh, we needed to create uh, a module um, to interact with the ID documents uh, over, the, over IPFS. Um, and uh, manage it, manage them, create them, uh, and resolve them. Uh, so this is uh, basically what I did. Uh, currently, I'm uh, just testing it. Um, I'm trying to be as thorough as possible because uh, the this specification has a lot of uh, details and uh, a lot of musts and shoulds. Uh, so we need to make sure that everything is okay. Um, and uh, the next print, uh, I'll. Uh, research a bit about uh, verifiable coordinations and social proofs. Right. So, do you guys have yeah. any questions? Yeah. Um, what's the thoughts with like IPID and ENS anchoring? Um, is that like an optional thing, or is that yeah? What's what's the status of that? ENS anchoring. Yeah, like putting the uh, the root, putting the sort of the root record into mm -hmm. the Ethereum names, you know, naming system in order to sort of have like a or or okay. into okay. any blockchain to just kind of like anchor it there. I know Johnny was talking about that, and I don't know what the current status is. So currently, I don't know if Andre is more uh, yeah as a, a better insight about that, but uh, I think uh, do you want to talk on that? Yeah, I think I think Paul is not aware of of yeah. uh, what is, what that that is because um, while um, John Johnny has been talking about it, I think it doesn't yet it didn't yet update it uh, the 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 API the the specification, um, meaning that it's still a work in progress. Um, so perhaps when when he finish that part and and actually includes in the spec, uh, we might we might actually look look into that. But as far as I know, that step is optional in the DID spec, in the PID DID spec. And, uh, you know, using a blockchain such as Ethereum um, causes, causes some friction, I would say, in, in, the, in the adoption because people don't, you know, don't, don't have um, crypto or don't have any, any Ethereum account with the with, uh, with, uh, yeah, no, no need to sell me. I just wasn't sure what Johnny was was planning on doing with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even even if it if it does, I mean, even if it gets added to the spec, and I guess it will be optional. I guess we won't implement it uh, till the MVP. So, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, no, it was Did someone say it Yeah, basically, uh, Johnny Crunch uh, is being. Um, I know, you know, he's being. Um, pretty cautious against or regarding IPNS um, and also IPLD. So instead of rely, relying only on IPNS and IPLD, he also wants to anchor the seeds in the blockchain <laughs> like Ethereum in order to serve as a 
confirmation that anyone can can check uh, inside the blockchain. Um, it's just about the time stamping a little bit. It's to make sure, like, to prove that a certain claim existed at a certain point in time, for sure. It's like, yep, that's it. Um, but but anyway, I think I think that the discussion will be um, will be made throughout the time when, when we discuss the, the actual uh, anchoring stuff. One uh, thing that uh, Andre, sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay, I think uh, just one more thing. Uh, quickly. Uh, basically, we have uh, an open issue on the IPIV spec uh, about the multi-writer scenarios. Uh, so uh, currently, uh, I also on the JS IPIV module, we are making some trade-offs, uh, like uh, we are going to implement uh, what we actually need to interact with the documents, and we will improve it um, as we go. So we are going to open some issues after the, the first implementation of the J, JS IPIV, uh, and those issues are going to be uh, like improvements or new features that we want to see that you want to see implemented uh, in the module. Uh, but uh, currently, we aimed to a very uh, simple uh, module right now. So yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, the thing about multi write and, and and also the thing about layer one and layer two need to go first into the the PID spec itself before we actually implement it implement it in the module. Otherwise, we'll be you know being kind of a fork of the PID spec, which we don't want. Um, so we'll try to make it um, make it make it into the PID spec before actually implementing. Implement, implementing it, and in a, as a matter of fact, it's not a, it's not blocking, so we can actually use the single write implementation and later on um, implement it the meta multi writer thing afterwards. Um, all right. So, any more questions for Paul? Hey, oh, just a, a brief thing that I'm going to be meeting with some people who are working on. Ver um, social proof stuff from the rebooting web of trust conference later this week uh i don't know how much useful things are going to come out of it in like the next week or two but i will i will loop you in if they do okay yeah Hope to hear from be, you yeah yeah it will be awesome i i was there with you and i i knew that uh, you were in that group and if you are producing any paper it will be awesome if you could link um link the paper itself into the notes so that we can um, check it later on, I would say. Okay. I'm, okay, I don't know I'll, if you're gonna I'll finish drop, the paper or not. <laughs> I'll, I'll drop the uh, embarrassingly early stage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, any Thanks, more Abby. questions for Paul? No? All right, so keep, let's keep going. Next one is Juan, Juan Sanchez. Uh, hi everyone, uh, so, during this last two, two weeks, um, I have been like part-time working on a, a small module to be added to the IDM, uh, which is having a, um, having a service worker using the, the WebAuthn uh, browser API uh, for us to be able to store a secret using like the, the hardware module, in, in this case using Touch ID. So the goal is to use the WebAuthn API to store a secret controlled by the user, uh, which can then be used to unlock the vault of the IDM. Um, so I can do a quick demo of this. Hopefully it will work. Oh, but you need to stop sharing your screen. Or someone. Yeah, it's in there. And now, now you're muted. I am muted, sorry. I was saying that regarding the demo, we'll have the second part for the demos. Oh, OK, OK, so okay whatever. So, just keep so my, yeah, 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 OK. okay. Okay, so my update is that uh, yay, there's like there are two libraries, one for service workers and one for the clients. Uh, both of them are clients anyway. Um, to use the, the Web of Ten um, API to store secrets and to recover secrets using Touch ID in this case. So it's like really nice user experience. Uh, we can store sixty four bytes and retrieve it using the thing. Yeah, that's it. All right, thank you. Uh João, any questions for João? No questions for now. I think most questions will will be um, will appear when you demo it. So uh, let's go forward. Uh, next one, next one in the list is is Adin. I don't know if you have any updates, Adin, but feel free to share them. 
Yeah, I've mostly just been uh, doing IPNS things. I have a single writer IPNS with Gossip Sub that will have persistence, um, which should help with republishing issues because your stuff won't have to expire, which happens with the DHT. The problem is you can't republish because they check that you're the actual person publishing, but now you're offline. And if you're offline for more than a day, then your records are gone. Um, and I think with JS, uh, JS nodes, it may, it may be worse because I think the, the time to live is even shorter. Um, so hopefully that should work. And I've been doing some work on the, the multi-writer stuff, but that mostly involves, uh, adding in specific, uh, subtopic or topic features. Um, right now, all topics are sort of treated the same. So you have to choose between, uh, you have to choose between like, do I want to use gossip sub or this new thing or flood sub? You have to like choose, you can't just like use them all. Uh, so I'm, I'm making that make sense. And hopefully in such a way that when we start looking at how to do this in JS land, it won't be, uh, it'll be pretty straightforward. All right. Um, I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, regarding the republishing, there will be two keys as, as you designed it in the first iteration. Well, I mean, the first iteration is to not do anything. So if you have, um, if you just have, if you have gossip going, you can set and you just manually set the, the time, the end of life for the record to be really far, then like you won't have to worry about publishing, right? Yeah. Uh, whereas right now, that's not even an option to set the end of life to be really far. Uh, so that's sort of like the solve the problem in the near term and then adding in republishing keys is uh, <coughs> a, further, a further issue, mostly because it changes the IPNS spec because now you need to include Related to the key, the key needs to contain not just the publishing key, but also the republishing key. Um, so you end up like changing the spec. So for now, this is the uh, the the way to get this off the ground, unblock people as soon as possible. Okay. So regarding the the GS IPID module that Paul implemented. Uh, so perhaps would you suggest that we put um, like one year of, of time to live in our case until, until uh, the republishing part is implemented? I mean, it's, it sort of depends, right? If you're not going to have, if there's not going to be a node online that's gossiping your, your DID record, then you're in just as many problems anyhow. Right? All right. Um, so, okay. So, 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 we might, so we might have like, um, in terms of uh, a temporary solution will be to have an infrastructure of uh, nodes that are aware of, of those records and be always online basically. Yeah. So I think Jim has been working on some stuff with uh, basically IPNS pinning or some, Right now he's working mostly on pair pad pinning, but I think at some point this is going to graduate into setting up IPNS pinning that you could uh, do in addition to using cluster for, for data IPFS pinning. Um, and that should be useful. Um, I don't know how soon that's, that stuff is really going to be available because it's based on stuff that I'm working on and Jim's working on. And also there's no, the persistence is not, has not been implemented in the JS uh, pub sub stuff, um, mostly because gossip sub hasn't landed, uh, hasn't like officially landed yet. Yeah. So I, I think in the near term, just sort of like keep doing what you're doing, but we're gonna, we'll keep you informed and hopefully like within the next month or so, we should know what the trajectory is gonna look like. Yeah. Okay. Uh, regarding Jill, which is the note taker, Jill, can you take a note about creating an issue to lift all the requirements that we have in terms of inf infrastructure, like pinning the seeds and, and uh, regarding IPNS and time to live and, and the thing that uh, Adin mentioned, so that we can uh, have a list of requirements for 
you know, for identities not not to be lost, basically, <laughs> uh, it will be it will be you know bad for for the MVP if that happened. Um, that's it, basically. Um, any more questions for Adin? No more questions. All right, so the next two attendees are just observing. So let's move on to the second part of the, the meeting, um, which is the demos and the questions. So if you have any further questions uh, or questions that you see or want to ask um, in, the, in the end of this meeting, please list them here in the, in the document and we will have uh, five minutes questions and answers. Uh, but right now let's do the demos. And um, so the first one is actually me. Um, I already, I'm already sharing my screen and I have here a quick demo uh, for you to see. So the first one is the human crypto keys module um, that I'm, I'm working on. And what I'm going to show you is just bear in mind that, that this is just a, a, a test file that I uh, created for this demo. So basically what I'm doing here is to import a library. And we have the, here three functions, which, which are the main ones, which is the generate key pair, generate key pair from mnemonic, and um, sorry, get key pair from mnemonic and get key pair from seed. So what we actually do first is to generate a key. Afterwards, we ge generate or get the same key based on its mnemonic, because this object here is composed of uh, not only the key, but also the mnemonic and the seed. So in this case, I'm passing the same algorithm and the mnemonic that I get from the first step. And also in the third step, I'm gonna uh, recreate the same key, but from the seed. Um, and what, what you will see printed in the screen is the, the first result object. And then you should see uh, a true here and a true here because the keys will be the, should be the same, basically. So I'm going to run this file. I don't know if I should, perhaps I should increment the font size. So what you will see uh, now is that it will, it will be actually slow at, at, in terms of you know, user experience. Uh, having to wait like three, four seconds just to generate a key is not very nice. Um, that's why I'm looking to using uh, elliptic curves because that's, you know, generating an elliptic curve from a seed is pretty straightforward. You don't, you don't need to actually do anything. You just take the bytes and, and, and that's it. So uh, seeing the output, um, the output of the, the generate key pair was an object with uh, an algorithm property which contains all the algorithm parameters so that we can replicate the key uh, later on, um, like one year from now or two years, two years from now. In this case, the, the, the type of the key is RSA. It has um, 2048 bits. Uh, it has this, this public exponent and also the method to find the prime numbers used is prime ink. And also we get the mnemonic, which is you know, 12 words, um, a 12 words passphrase basically. Also we get the seed based on the mnemonic. So the mnemonic generates a seed, which has this amount of bytes. I think it's 64 bytes. And then based on that seed, we get the, the public key and the private key. And as you see, the second, um, the second and third steps have a Boolean, a Boolean to true, meaning that it generated the same keys um, as the first one. So this is my first demo. I'm still, I'm still working on this module that there's a lot of stuff still to do. But basically, I need to do tests and, and, and make the code prettier. Um, the second demo is the key parser library. So let me just clear my screen first. What I'm going to demo here is simply a parsing. Let me just open the test file. I think it's this one. Um, so what I'm doing here is to uh, take the take the um, two sets two set of just, actually just one private key which is this one, and I'm going to try to parse it. So in this case, this key 
if you if you open here is uh, pkcs1 pem key with uh, four primes and it has four uh, four thousand and ninety six bits um, so we should be able to parse any type of key and i'm going to demo this key in particular so if we run this run this what we get from the output is um, saying hey the format is pkcs1 uh, in the pem format and the key is an rsa and has you know all these parameters like the modules the private uh, exponent the prime one prime two and all of that stuff and also it contains uh, encryption null because the key, the key is not encrypted. If the key was encrypted with a passphrase, you, you will see this as an object telling you uh, the algorithm uh, used by the encryption and also its parameters such as the IV and, and all of that. So this module will be used by the um, will be used by this module in order to actually create elliptic curve uh, private keys. Um, and also in the format of pkcs8 because at the moment if you see here the private keys is in pkcs1 format which is uh, an old format and is deprecated basically um, no one uses this format no, uh, nowadays um, and you know that's basically it if you have any questions please ask them no questions Okay, cool. So heading on to the next demo, which is the web auth service web auth and service worker by Joao. Hello again. Uh, so, uh? Music. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's a little setup here. Right. I'm ready for this call. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, we are All right. This is working. School. So just come here. Can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah, cool. so let me just clean this up. Um, so this is just like a very very basic demo. Actually, I cannot see anything. Yeah, uh, a very basic demo of using a, a web attend service worker. So if you can just think of a situation where we are either registering a user or like setting up the vault for the IBM, uh, the only thing the user would need to do is to come here, set its username, uh, and then you would press the register button. And now here I'm asking for a circuit that we want to store. So this is not at all necessary. Just think of this as the secret that we want to store in the hardware module in this case. So I can provide either, uh, it would be probably the best way to unlock the vault or something like that. So let's put this wrong, wrong, a super secret test phrase. Um, then this would prompt me for my touch ID credentials. I put in my finger, I will allow it here. Uh, and now um, the information of the public key I just registered using WebAuthn is stored by, by, by the service worker uh, in index limit. Um, <coughs> that I put in, in the prompt is not stored. That secret is stored directly on the hardware module. In this case, it's Apple's Touch ID uh, hardware module. Um, and then when I come back, I bring my username. So here as well, then I press login. Uh, it knows which public to check against based on my username. Then I just confirm it with my finger. Uh, I am logged in and I retrieve the, the secret right here. So this secret here is a base64 encoded SHA-256 of the first secret I created uh, in the beginning. And now I'm getting it back uh, here at the end. So yeah, so we can just think of the possibilities of using this secret for anything. Um, now, like there are some caveats about, like we are using a, a field of level 10 to store a secret, which really shouldn't be used to store secrets. It's, this is the user handle. This is supposed to be just a pointer for the server to connect a user to a public key. It's essentially the user ID. Uh, but it is securely stored on the side of the client's device, so like no other website can access it. Um, so yeah, like we, sh we should get some feedback from other people in the community to see if this is okay to do. Uh, but it seems to be fine. Uh, and yeah, this like great UX right now. We can do all sorts of things uh, by using the user handle to store secrets. Yeah. So that's it. Oh yeah, so just like just one last thing, very fast. Uh, this is a library right now, 
so we have the, the library for the clients. So we just need to import the web Authent handler, and then we just make it handle the login and registration, where it takes the username, uh, the secret, and the name of the user. And then we also have the library for the service worker, which is just like the, the routes to handle uh, the register, the login, and the responses. The response being a challenge which is sent by the service worker to the clients. So it's very simple to take this example. This is on GitHub. Uh, very simple to take this example and just implement it anywhere else. So next steps are going to be to take these two libraries and implement them on the IDM or non-use example that exists right now to make this one of the fault blocks. Uh, right there, I think this is the point. Um, cool. So yeah. So to give to give some context um, about why are you using a um, a service worker? Can you explain, uh, John, to people? I I know you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Better yeah. for you to explain. Uh, so essentially, the way WebAuthn works is for you to get a very traditional authentication mechanism between a client and the server. But instead of using a username and a password, you are using a public key cryptography. Okay, public private key cryptography. So the way it works is the user registers itself uh, with a username, and then the server sends a challenge to be signed by the user, and the user is signing that challenge with a private key that was generated in its device. Uh, by, by the browser, essentially, using the, the hardware device. Um, it can be like a USB token, can be touch ID, like any, any other type of sensor that can authenticate a person. Um, the problem here is, since we are like all about the decentralized web, servers do not exist, they are persona non grata. So we have to find like something else to make WebAuthn work. So we want to use WebAuthn uh, because of the features it gives us to sign uh, and verify signatures, but without the server. So what we can do is we create a service worker that intercepts all the communications between the client and the alleged server. Um, so it can still do the challenge and everything, although that has very, very little value because it's a challenge that exists only on the client side. What we're doing is just leverage that piece of information that we, that we can store encrypted, which is the user handle. So all we want from WebAuthn at this point is to store the user handle in the, the hardware device. Um, hopefully in the future, WebAuthn will expose primitives to encrypt and decrypt messages. That would be like the best way of doing it. So using WebAuthn to encrypt and decrypt a message. But since we do not have that today, the only thing we have is a digital signature. That's what we're using. Uh, but yeah, the wish list is encrypt and decrypt functions. All right. Thank you, João. Um, does anyone have questions for João? Adi, go ahead. How do you? Yeah. So what? Um, what's like the web authentic plan if like I don't have a, you know I'm using my laptop and I, I don't have Touch ID or or a USB thing. Can I run like a local? Oh, no. <laughs> so if you don't have the Touch ID, you should have like the, the USB thing. If you don't have anything, I, I think you're out of luck. Can you can you create like a, can you like just implement the FIDO library and just tie it to an SSH key on your desktop? I don't know. Nope. No, you can't. So basically, this this uh, API is uh, offered by the browser. And it must be, you know, the different types must be approved by the FIDO Foundation, I think, Jean, if I'm not mistaken. So you are, um, basically you have to use what they define and they offer. You can just uh, plug in what your uh, other types of authentication there. So we just stuck with uh, Touch ID and uh, USB drives. And later on, later on, on Android also work, so that's cool. Yeah. Just there are a lot of them. And later on, uh, perhaps macOS will also implement uh, Face ID. Uh, I will imagine when, when Face ID becomes available to macOS and all of that. But uh, you can just plug in what what uh, you know any custom um, type of, of authentication. You have to use what they offer. And uh, that's why that's why we have in IDM we, we have the passphrase, you, you know, just just because you can't always use the web help and API. So the passphrase is 100% supported because that's what that's what we implemented. Um, and then we can leverage other log types to be more user friendly in terms of being, you know, uh, fast to to unlock the IDM. 
because you know users hate passwords. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, any more questions regarding this demo? No. So let's go to the to the final one, I think, which is uh, by Paulo Marcos. So, Paulo, you have five minutes. <laughs> okay. So very quickly, uh, I don't know if you can see my screen already. Please tell me when. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Right, what about now? yeah it's, it's okay now yeah okay so uh basically i'll just uh present it as quick as possible so um the ipid api is pretty simple so basically you use a factory to create an instance of ipid you pass it you pass a node of uh, ipfs an instance of IPF, ipfs and uh, you can do three things resolve by passing uh, the id so basically this will uh, resolve the DID and get you the, the document associated to that DID, create uh, a new DID with its document uh, and update it. So basically we are using the uh, PAM uh, private key to do this, uh, to be consistent with IPFS since IP when we import keys uh, in IPFS, uh, it's currently being done uh, with a PAM. So we are keeping that uh, consistent. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, the second argument of the, the create uh, and the update, it's the, the document. What is the document? So basically you get the document and you can uh, do some stuff with the document. So like you can add public keys uh, and this uh, public key, um, you pass uh, an object to it. Uh, basically this object, uh, you can see its specification in the did uh, spec. Uh, you can revoke a public key by specifying its ID. You can add an authentication. Currently, we are just uh, using embed uh, reference authentication because uh, embed authentication in the DID spec is currently a little bit inconsistent uh, and not pretty well defined. We are hoping uh, to see it go forward a little bit until we actually implement it. Um, uh, also, we can add a service and the spec is also defined with the DID spec and to revoke it, you just pass the DID. So as a quick uh, example, uh, here we are creating a node, uh, an IPFS node. And to create the IPID, we just pass it to the IPID. So uh, let's Let's create a DID with its document. And what we are doing here is we are going to create a, a, a DID. Uh, we are going to pass the private key as a PAM and we, we get the document. And when we get the document, we get it templated uh, with uh, what is actually uh, required in the document. And after that, you just um, play with it a little bit uh, as you're liking. And, uh, uh, you have, for example, a public key, you have an authentication method, and you have a service. So let's run this and see what it will return. I can see, I can see, okay, sorry. So this is basically the document that uh, gets created after we run this little bit of, of code. Uh, what if we try to resolve this? So basically this is our DID. This is our method, IPID, and this is our identifier. The identifier is actually an IPNS uh, hash. So we can get the, the document by using uh, this hash. So let me just, instead of doing this, let's just resolve this. So as you can see here, this is the DID that was already created. So let's run this and it will resolve the document. So actually we get, as you can see here, it's exactly the same document that we created and we can update it. So let's update. Let's add a new authentication method uh, with a different public key. Currently we only have one, as you can see here, PK1. Let's add a new one. So run this and okay so this is the updated document as you can see here we have a, a new authentication method and it's already published so this is pretty simple uh, we currently have this uh, API 
uh, I think it's quite simple to understand and uh, easier for anyone that wants to pick up to pick this up and uh, yeah this is basically it we hope to implement uh, more features uh, as the time goes by and the spec gets more mature um, and that's it Thank you, Paul. Just a disclaimer, um, the examples that you uh, showed to us are mm -hmm. not actually valid in terms of- Yeah, the yeah. yeah, they are not, yeah. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, he added um, he demo, uh, uh, the, the addition of um, authentication key yeah. uh, with the ID that uh, didn't actually exist in the mm -hmm. public keys array. So bear in mind that this was just for demo purposes, yeah. not a real DID document um, being, you know, um, Define as per the spec. Um, any questions for Paul? No, no questions. All right. So I think we are done with the demos. Let me get out of full screen. Uh, can Can you stop sharing? Yeah. Sorry. Just a second. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. So finally, uh, we have a little space like, space like five minutes for questions. Feel free to ask any questions, really. We are here to, you know, to discuss things and to answer anything that you want, would like to know more. Do you have any questions for us? No questions, come on. <laughs> no questions, all right. Um, so I guess I guess um, we should finish here. Thank you, everyone, for for um, appearing and and uh, coming to this session. And see you see you in two weeks from now on. So bye bye and thank you again. Bye. 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 See you.